Well, uh, I'm very pleased to say that Ken Livingstone is here with me now. Uh, good to see you. Um, Ken Livingstone, you must find yourself in unfamiliar territory with uh, both the polls and commentators suggesting that uh, your time is up. Oh, no. I, I remember being written off totally when the GLC was abolished. I mean, what I find when I'm out on the streets is people aren't interested in uh, the ages of the candidates or who they live with or uh, all these peripheral issues. What they want to know is what are you going to do about transport, what are you going to do about crime, what are you going to do about the environment, are you going to build affordable housing? The public are very focused on the issues and I think uh, clearly my opponents have got a uh, really interest in getting away from the issues onto the trivia because on almost all the, the issues uh, there is majority support for the things we're doing. Do you think there is also an issue around the perception of trust? For example, why are you so secretive about who funds your campaign? We're not secretive. It was exactly what we did four years ago. I don't want to be involved in raising money from rich individuals or corporations who I might then find I have to deal with in a mayoral situation. And so, I mean, in line with the law, I, we, I mean, Boris chooses to raise the money personally. He's free to do so. He has to declare that. The Labour Party raises the money for me, as it does for the Liberal Party for Brian Paddock, and we don't get involved in it. But you could just clear up the issue by declaring who gives money but it to is you. Declared. I mean, do, do you the not Labour think that Londoners have it. the right to know who right donates to, to your campaign? Absolutely. And all they've got to do is log on to the, the um, uh, Electoral Commission website, and all the people who donate to the Labour Party are listed there. And at the moment, people who donate to the Labour Party, that money is largely going to be spent on my campaign. But we now know, don't we, that you said this happened in your 2004 mm. campaign. We now know that you received money during that campaign from property mm. benefic who benefited from your planning policies. Mm. You can see the issue here. Well, I mean, the, the reality is that people who want to support the policies which I, I initiated, which is that if you've got a world-class building and it actually is attractive to look at, like London Bridge Tower, and it brings 10,000 jobs to London Bridge, which is a deprived, white working class area, I'm delighted to give permission to that building, and it was unanimous decision of all the Liberals, the Tories so and the Labour Party Ken, on the Council. So Ken Livingstone, you don't think it looks odd that the money that you receive is <coughs> so close to the threshold that you have to declare. It looks like you've got something to hide, even if you haven't. But it, the, the reality is that all these donations are published um, on the Electoral Commission website, I don't want to know. If I know a property developer has given money to my campaign, I would then not be able to d rule on whether or not planning application was right. But you've already said that some of your closest advisers mm. in their spare time have been working on the London Labour mm. Party campaign. Are you honestly saying, can you put your hand on mm. your heart and you say that none of that knowledge comes back to you? Absolutely. They, they have a, a firewall between the fundraising and the mayor. Because almost any company in London any major player in London um, life could end up needing some sort of financial relationship okay. with uh, the, the officer of mayor, and I don't want to know. Well, Ken Livingstone, the reality is, isn't it, that people just don't trust politicians. Uh, for example, when serious questions mm. were raised about your chief race advisor, Lee Jasper, mm. your first instinct wasn't to investigate, mm. but to dismiss the claims, implying that there was nothing... It wasn't. I mean, the very first thing I did as soon as, I mean, I think it was Tim Donovan came to me and said, we got these questions. As soon as that interview was over, I went straight back, phoned the he head of the London Development Agency and said, would you please investigate this? They did that investigation, they brought the auditors in, they did an investigation, reported it, you've covered that and put it, then it was passed over to the police and so on. We immediately went on an investigation. What I did say was, none of this is evidence. I mean, Lee Jasper resigned because of inappropriate emails to a, to a woman. I mean, no one, 15 weeks on, no one's got a shred of evidence to suggest any financial wrongdoing. But the reason that the issue won't go away <coughs> is because you have said that he may come back in the future. If you believe that he's done nothing wrong, he's got your full backing, mm. why did he quit? Uh, not once, but mm. twice. He, did, he, he quit because there were inappropriate emails um, in the Evening Standard. And if, any, if that had been raised at the beginning, he would have gone then. If he is cleared, and there's going to be an independent investigation by a barrister, he would come back. If he's not, he can't. But it does raise questions mm. about whether or not you knew any of this was going on, or people will draw their own conclusions. Well, um, if anyone would like to use any evidence of that, that'd be fine. OK, well, now to transport. Whatever you say about all mm. the investment that's going into uh, transport, what people are complaining about is mm. crime and antisocial behaviour mm. on the buses.
Boris Johnson's got a point, hasn't he? Well, if, if you ignore all the facts and figures, yes. We had a spike of antisocial behaviour by kids immediately after we introduced free travel for under 16 years. That was two years ago. We put teams of 18 PCSOs and police in each of the 21 suburban boroughs and the crime rate um, involving under 16s was cut by 19% last year. Statistics aside, the emails that we get coming into this mm. programme and the London Assembly report mm. said that people feel less safe on buses than any other form of transport. When you're going for a third mm. term, do you feel that you're losing touch with no. what Londoners really care about? Well, um, you, you have a basic pattern on TV, radio and newspapers that if it bleeds, it leads. Sometimes I switch on, watch your programme, it's crime, 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 crime. I never switch on and see a leading headline saying, murder rate cut 28%, rate down 25%, crime falling five years in a row. And today, the Metropolitan Commission announced that the annual fall in crime has now gone up to 6.3%, the highest it's ever been. You don't report the good news. A lot of people we, out there are we, worried we, because we they, do, we they, do report they don't the get news. a balance. But when you're going for mayor, what matters is what mm. people feel like when they're travelling on the bus, yeah. for example. Cr statistics aside, and as mm. you say, those statistics have mm. gone down. It's how people feel, and that is how they may vote. But if they didn't feel I mean, good about travelling on the bus, we wouldn't be in a position where the buses today are carrying 50% more people than when I was elected, and the increase in bus ridership in London is larger than any other city on the face of the planet. This has been a transformation of the bus system, and of course sometimes kids get on and they're noisy, but that isn't a crime. We were all noisy when we were kids. OK, Ken Livingstone, I'm afraid we've run out of time. Many thanks. We must leave it there. Thank, Thank you, you for joining us this evening.